Thanks for dropping in. In this video, I unwrap a ball of bubble wrap, I cut very small pieces of plastic with very large scissors, and I discover to screw something in, you need to have a screw there. An eBay store I've used many times for second-hand PCs and laptops is Computer Hive. This video is not sponsored and I bought all items myself as a normal customer. I've always found Computer Hive to have excellent service and what they say you get, you get. On having a look, I found this listing for 4 times HP 260 USFF Ultra Small Form Factor PCs with a Celeron 2957U dual core CPU and 2GB of RAM. The price was £45 but there was a 20% off offer which meant that I paid around £36 for this lot or just £9 for each of the PCs. The Celeron is from the time of the 4th gen Intel CPUs. While not being a powerhouse, these tiny PCs measuring approximately 18cm in length and width and only 3.5cm high would still make an ideal media box or emulation PC. Although these have no storage included, it got me thinking as I have a shed load of 2.5 inch SSDs from an eBay job lot a while ago which also included a load of RAM. So I could get these 4 HP 260G1 PCs, plug in a 2.5 inch SSD with which they are compatible, swap around and upgrade the RAM, add an operating system and being HP pre-built they should already have a Windows license and if not there is always Linux and that will result in four times nice media PCs for media consumption or emulation or just cool little PCs. Yes, I'm a nerd. So I ordered them. What turned up? Computer Hive have always packaged the items I bought well, and this was no exception. Using bubble wrap and cardboard in such a way as a courier could probably drop kick it down the Grand Canyon, it would still be functional. I also tried to preserve the bubble wrap from orders so that it can be reused rather than just ripping it apart like a rage crazed Neanderthal. This is both from an environmental aspect as well as the fact it's expensive. The more I can reuse for stuff I sell, the better. As well as having some on hand to pop when the urge takes me, of course. Eventually I get to the PCs and they are exactly as described. With a nice set of I.O. on the back, which I'll take a look at in a moment. And on the bottom, each one has a Windows 8 sticker which means they should have an embedded license, which also means, if I'm really lucky, the previous owner will have taken advantage of the free Windows 10 upgrade offer while it was on. This offer has ended now, so if you have a Windows 7 or 8 PC that was not upgraded, then you're now stuck with Windows 7 or 8. But for a while, it could be upgraded for free to Windows 10, so fingers crossed. As mentioned, the footprint is tiny at approximately 18cm square and 3.5cm high. On the front, we have two USB 3A ports, as well as a headphone and mic 3.5mm jack, in addition to the power switch. On the back, there is a power socket which takes a 19.5 volt 3.33 amp 7.4 by 5mm tip, a display port, Ethernet, VGA, 2x USB 2A ports, as well as another 2x USB 3A ports. Nice. To open it up, I need to remove the thumb screws from the back. followed by the two positive drive screws underneath that in some instances are covered by a rubber bung, but not in this case. Once that is done, with a little effort, the bottom section slides back from the front and top section. Once inside, we can see the various components. The 2.5 inch caddy bay that I'll be making use of, as well as an M.2 slot, albeit only supporting the shorter 2242 drives. There's a half height PCI Express slot for Wi-Fi also, but this is where I ran into an issue. Everything I read said the HP 260 Gen 1 supported a 2.5 inch drive. Great! What I didn't realise is the lead needed to connect the drive to the motherboard was an optional extra you needed to buy from HP. The port for this lead can be found by removing the 2.5 inch drive caddy where there is a tiny socket that flips up and down to clamp the lead. So back onto eBay I went. 
The lead specifically for the HP 260 Gen 1 seems few and far between and very expensive when I found one. In addition, I needed four. However, I discovered that the lead for the HP Envy was electronically compatible, a lot more readily available and cheaper. However, the issue was that the leads for the Envy 17 have two protruding sides for positioning, which the 260 Gen 1 does not have. It needs them to be straight. So once my four leads arrived, I got to work with my precision custom made professional whopping great big pair of scissors. Made all the more tricky with trying to keep it in camera view. Possibly using a craft knife or scalpel or razor may have been a better idea, but hey. Fortunately, I discovered that my attempt here was good enough. They don't need to be totally flush. Back to the PC, the RAM could be accessed by removing the cover that is just press fit clamped in place. I removed the two gigabyte stick, my plan being to put this in one of the others to give that one a total of four gigabytes as 2.2 gigabytes. A note here is that being fourth gen, the RAM needs to be low power PC3L 1.35 volt rather than standard PC3 1.5 volt a lesson I learned in an earlier video. I then connected my itsy bitsy modified lead by raising the clamp, inserting the lead, contact side down, and then closing the clamp. And I added a single four gigabyte DDR3L, so importantly low power RAM stick. The mechanism the caddy uses to hold the 2.5 inch drive is via these adapters that screw into the mounting holes in the drive. Fortunately, three of these came in the same bundle as the SSDs and RAM. Man, that was a good bundle. I also have some other similar ones I can use for the other three PCs. Three instead of four should be fine for holding an SSD in place, but I would make sure I had all four if I was using a spinning rust hard drive though, due to the moving parts and vibrations. I can then put the RAM cover back on as this tucks in just under the caddy so it has to go on first. Followed by the caddy and then the SSD can be clipped in. Before tidying the cable up and closing it, best to make sure it's all working. On the power supply front, as mentioned, it needs 19.5 volts, 3.33 amps, and this is delivered through a 7.4 by 5 mm tip. I had an identical one, but Dell branded, but the HP 260 Gen 1 just beeped at me and refused to boot until I used an HP one. So something to bear in mind is these units insist on HP or HP compatible power supplies. But on powering on with an HP power supply, I can get into BIOS and see that the four gigabytes of RAM is successfully detected, albeit in single channel mode. However, I don't think single channel or dual channel will have much significance here as the, the dual core CPU is probably gonna be the bottleneck. The SSD is also successfully detected, bonus. So back to the PC, I tuck the SATA cables away under the caddy at about 19 centimeters long. It's longer than we need, and I'm not sure of the length of the official one, but at least it makes it easy to attach and detach drives and can be easily tucked away. I then replace the top, replacing the two positive screws and thumb screw on the back. The remaining three PCs went just as smoothly and with no issues. I set up another in the same way as this one, removing the two gigabytes of RAM and replacing with a single four gigabyte stick. 
and 128 gigabyte SSD. I then added the removed RAM to the other two and added 60 gigabyte SSDs to them, giving those two four gigabytes also, but as a two by two gigabyte configuration. As a bonus, all four self-activated with Windows 10, so they had been upgraded during the offer period, which was a great result. The SATA cables cost about £3.50 each, so each PC has cost me about £12.50, so I had the RAM and SSDs anyway, which is a bargain for a nifty little PC. I'll probably sell or give away three of them and keep one for myself, as I can think of a whole load of uses for this. Would you find a use for these little, if low spec PCs? Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and leave a comment below. Take care, and I'll see you soon.